Well, it's time to put the earth berm in the earth berm cottage. There are a lot of steps here, so I'm going to present this in three parts. Part one, waterproofing, exterior insulation, siding, and the drain vent system for the kitchen and bathroom sink. Part two, building a lime stabilized cob retaining wall, installing a French drain and earth tube cooling system. And then part three, building the berm along with many more retaining walls. For reference, here's a conceptual drawing of the cottage I made before starting construction over a year ago. If you've been following the build, you can see I've made several changes, so keep this in mind as we, as we go along. The first step was waterproofing the exterior wall. As a recap, the walls are stud framed with 2x6s, sheathed with 3 quarter inch ground contact, contact plywood, and then filled mostly with cob. To waterproof the walls, I used an elastomeric liquid membrane that is typically used for waterproofing basement walls or shower enclosures. I put mesh tape over the plywood seams, use a roller to put on the and use a roller to put on the first coat. After that, I used a paintbrush to make sure the screw holes and seams were well covered. I put a second and third coat in the lower, lower portion of the wall since the berm will only come up five to six feet. For the drain vent pipe penetrations in the lower sections, I vent I fastened vent pipe flashing collars to the wall with screws and neoprene washers. I don't have a picture, but I also put butyl tape around the perimeter of the pipe flashing before fastening it down. Afterwards, I applied a healthy dose of liquid membrane along the edges of the collars. The membrane is the last line of defense to keep water out of the cottage. I'll be taking several other precautions, so hopefully I won't have to shed much moisture. I decided to use continuous exterior insulation to isolate the walls from the ambient surface temperatures. The walls are infilled with cob, which has a great thermal capacity. To maintain a comfortable temperature inside the cottage, I want the walls to absorb heat energy from the ground, which in our area, at a depth of 6 plus feet, maintains a constant temperature of around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So the walls and ceilings of the cottage are insulated, but the floor is not. For my video about the thermal properties of cob, see the link above. For insulation, I used 4 foot by 8 foot by 1.5 inch thick sheets of Rock Wool Comfort Board 80, which is a rigid min mineral wool product. Mineral wool is made from molten minerals spun into fibers. It has many good properties, the most important in this case being, being water vapor permeable, which means it won't trap moisture against the walls. The second aspect I like is that it has been suggested from sources I think are reliable that Rock Wool Comfort Board is termite and carpenter ant resistant. Note the manufacturer does not make this claim. However, I have some first-hand experience with foam insulation panels and know that the carpenter ants in my area absolutely love it. Mineral is a very different consistency and feel than foam, so hopefully it does the trick. I'll still have to be vigilant for termite and carp carpenter ant infestation though. On the downside, Comfort Board 80 is very expensive. It's about the twice the price of foam and difficult to find. I had to go through a building supplier about 30 miles from me who had a truck in for a manufacturer two miles from, 200 miles from them with a lead time of about a month. The material is pretty easy to work with. I cut it with an insulation knife with essentially a steak knife and tacked each panel of the wall with screws and roofing discs. Since the side and back walls will only be partially burned, the upper two to three feet of the cottage walls will be visible. I couldn't bring myself to install cement board siding, so I used pine lap boards. Since the roof eave is fairly deep, and there are gutters, the wood should be well protected from moisture. So first I attached 1x4 furring strips vertically. This provided attachment points for the siding, held the insulation in place, and provided an air gap to allow the siding to dry out if it does get wet. Here's one wall with the lap siding mostly finished. Later I put a pressure treated 1x6 along the bottom of the lap siding where the berm to wall transition will be. Another important detail to take care of was installing the drain and bit system for the kitchen sink and half bath. Since the back and sides are bermed, I was able to run the drain pipe straight out the wall. The vent pipe runs straight up and over the roof line. And I strapped the drain pipes to the furring strips and ran them underground where the retaining wall will begin. Here's a shot of the waste water pipe from the kitchen sink. I have it capped off temporarily, but eventually it will run to a gravel basin. Here's a gravel basin I installed for the half bath sink. I dug a roughly four foot by four foot by two foot deep hole and then half filled it with, rock, with river rock. 
Then I ran the drain pipe into an irrigation valve box and filled around the box with more river rock. I put down an old tarp to keep sediment from filling in the space between the river rock before covering it with dirt. I must estimate this drain basin should be able to handle at least eight gallons of water a day when it shouldn't see more than three. I'll build a similar but slightly larger drainage basin for the kitchen sink. During this time, I also installed a wood stove and chimney, which technically could have waited until after backfilling the berm, but it was cold and I had this, I had, I had this rocket heater core store in the shed for a couple of years. It's not very pretty, but it is amazing. That's it for part one. Check back or sign up for notifications for part two. Thanks for watching.